Today's video is sponsored by War Thunder. Today we're putting a common household hazard to the test. We are going to see what happens if you stick a paperclip into a live outlet. Here we have an outlet, and of course normally outlets aren't just sitting in the middle of a desk, but this outlet has been extended from the wall outlet. This is a normal outlet, it has all of the same insides and parts and workings and wires as the outlets in your wall. The only difference is it's a lot easier to get to here on the desk. As you can see, Callie has plugged in this lamp, and it is functioning. Of course, it's also not normal for a tank to come crashing through your wall, but that's something you can do in the game War Thunder, our sponsor for today's video. Nate and I had a chance to try out this online military vehicle combat game, and it's a lot of fun. It's true, we were able to download it for free on our computers, but you can also play it for free on Xbox and PS4. And if you want to play it with friends but don't have the same system, that's alright, because War Thunder allows for cross-platform play. Something that I thought was really cool about this game too is that this game has more than 1,200 historically accurate playable tanks, aircrafts, helicopters, ships, everything ranging from the 1930s to the 1990s. Personally, I like playing the M1A1 Abrams. It's just amazing to drive around this vehicle that you see in today's news. Click the link in the description to register and download War Thunder for free. By using our link, you will receive a premium tank or aircraft as well as three days of premium account time. So let's take a look at what's inside an outlet. And again, this is the same thing that's going on inside your wall. This is just kind of a slick little packaging for it. Other than that, it's exactly the same. So you can see that the three wires here actually connect with the three different parts of the socket. So you've actually got a ground, a neutral, and a hot, and they all connect with the different wires. In the United States, ground is either going to be bare copper or with a green covering over it. Neutral is white, and the hot wire, the one where electricity comes in, is black. Those connect onto our outlet, usually in an outlet in the United States, where you attach the hot wire is going to have gold screws, and where you attach the neutral wire is going to have silver screws. In this case, they've also used a green screw to show where the ground attaches. The ground is an emergency backup wire. It's in case something goes wrong. If too much electricity flows through or if something gets physically broken, the ground is there to make sure that any wire flowing through the hot gets sent into the safe ground spot because it's not gonna be flowing correctly through the neutral wire. So now you've seen what's inside the outlet. We have the three different wires that each correspond to the three holes in the plug face. This bottom one that's shaped kind of like an archway, that's the ground wire. All of the electricity is coming in through the hot wire. That's the smaller hole on the right. The other two holes are the neutral and the ground and that's where the electricity goes back out. To get alternating current to work, it needs to be completing this path. And it only comes from one side and goes out the other side. So now we want to find out exactly what's going to happen if we start sticking bits of metal into our outlet. Here's the basic idea. We have got paper clips, we've got knives, and we've got electricity. Let's see what happens when they all meet. We've got a voltmeter and we can use it to test the voltage running through this outlet. We'll attach one lead into the hot and one lead into the neutral. And then we can also attach it to the ground and we should get the same result. We're seeing about 122.9, and we are in the United States where usually that's putting out about 120, so that lines up pretty nicely. If a person were to get 15 amps running through them at 120 volts, that could stop your heart. It's really actually a dangerous amount of electricity. So is this something that can happen to you just by sticking a paper clip in the outlet? So in the neutral, we get a reading of 123. If we put the lead in the ground, the exact same reading, 123 volts. Is a paperclip going to complete a circuit? Well, it's possible. Here's the thing you have to keep in mind. If the paperclip is in the hot side of the outlet, there is electricity flowing into it, but electricity isn't going to flow unless it can go somewhere. With the neutral and ground, that allows the circuit to complete. If the paperclip is touching nothing, then a circuit's not going anywhere, it's not complete, and electricity's not gonna flow through it. However, you could be grounded. Currently I'm wearing shoes with rubber soles and rubber gloves, but they are kind of thin rubber gloves, and I don't know exactly how conductive my shoes are. So it's possible that if I put this into the hot side of the outlet, it would zap me. Although, I do feel fairly safe putting it into the neutral and the ground side, and I'm even gonna try that right now. Doesn't seem to be doing anything to me. I'm not feeling it. Ground, neutral, nothing's really happening there. With the outlet unplugged, I've now fit this paper clip into the hot side, and now we're going to plug it back in and do some more testing on it. Not by grabbing it, though. Let's take our voltmeter and check this again. So again, we're gonna have one 
connected to the neutral and the other one we're going to touch to our paper clip which is now extended out so this paper clip is now hot and by hot i don't mean temperature it's warm i mean that it has electricity ready to flow right through it 123 flowing through that paper clip right there now i'm not quite dumb enough to just grab straight onto that but we have some hot dogs which have a similar moisture and sodium content to people and we're gonna see what happens if we connect hot dogs to both of these wires so he's putting on a much thicker much more insulated glove for this okay so now we're gonna see if anything happens with this hot dog touching to both of these paper clips oh <laughs> that is sparking and that is burning yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I like my fingers. So that, that would that would be your fingers right there. Yeah. It almost has a smell of burning hair. That's actually what this reminds me of. Probably the casing around the hot dog. So you may see this and think, well, I mean, I get that it's shocking and it's burning a little bit, but that doesn't look like that bad of an injury. So if you just left a hot dog sitting on this for like 10 minutes, would you have a cooked hot dog? Uh, at least partially. Right now we've got the leads so close together that they're not gonna cook most of the hot dog. It's just gonna travel the shortest path from where it's touching. But now I'm gonna see what happens if I actually try and stab it onto the paper clips. I yeah, think I, I don't think you want that on your skin. I think you made it angry. Oh boy, did I ever. Oh no. <sighs> that smells awful. <laughs> Okay, that's not the smell of burning meat, guys. That's the smell of like melting acrylic and burnt hair. That's terrible. This like carved a hole into the hot dog and completely oh. blackened out that paper clip. So with the hot dogs, it just takes a little bit of contact and you can see it starts burning. However, there is a bigger concern with people. When electricity flows through muscles on a person, they actually are activated. They, they seize up and they contract. Hot dogs don't have a lot of muscles going on in them. In fact, I'd go ahead and say no, None muscle. no connected active muscles inside a hot dog. People, however, are full of them. And it takes only as little as five one thousandths of a volt to make the muscles start spasming. This is much more than that. This is 120, about 123 actually, volts running through this. So if you were to accidentally touch this, then your muscles could seize up grab the paper clips even harder and maybe pull you in so that you can't let go and then the electricity keeps flowing through you with no other path. It's just gonna go through you until something breaks that circuit. So we've seen what our finger analog does if it comes in contact with both the hot and the neutral leads at the same time. All right, so I want us to try and actually bend one of these paper clips and see if we can complete that circuit without using a second one. When I say we, I meant I was gonna make Nate do it. Now I'm going to be wearing a thick rubber glove. I have rubber soled shoes and the paper clip should conduct electricity very well. So this paper clip will be the path of least resistance. This should mean that electricity isn't flowing into me, especially because this is a pretty good sturdy rubber glove and really think it's gonna do a good job. Let's plug this in okay. and see what a paper clip does in the hot and neutral. Well, definitely got a lot of sparks out of that. Well, got a lot more sparks out of that. You are making That's it. Wow, that one. Staying went very red connected. For a oh, did the light turn off? All the lights just turned off. Okay, so we had <laughs> lights plugged in all around the studio, and that second time there where it sparked, they all turned off. So I'm pretty sure that means we've now tripped the breaker, which is what we were hoping would happen. That's what the breaker is designed for. And you can see now, this is still in there and nothing's happening, no more sparks, it's not hot, and all the lights are off. So, we need to find the circuit breaker. <laughs> Should be this switch, you can see how this, for example, this doesn't move that direction at all. This one, however, can click that way. That means it's tripped. So what we do is we switch it back to off, and then the paper clip's not in there anymore, is it? Nope, I'm checking. You're good. That should have fixed it. We've got our outlet unplugged again after successfully tripping the breaker with our paperclip a couple of times. The next thing we're gonna try is fitting our paperclip into the hot lead side of the outlet and then touching it to the grounded screw in the middle of the outlet. We're gonna see if we get the same reaction to that 
as we did with the neutral side of the outlet. <laughs> yep, that tripped the breaker again. Whew! Wow. Yep, that, uh, that zaps it pretty good. There's just burn marks all around the screw now. Something that I think is important to note, when we had the paper clip connecting the circuit, it sparked a lot, but the breaker tripped. It turned off. When we had the hot dog connecting the two paper clips, it wasn't flowing enough to trip the breaker. And that's probably the same thing that would happen with your fingers. The electricity would flow, it would burn, it would cause your muscles to contract and seize, but it probably isn't going to trip the breaker, which means it's gonna you're in hurting. trouble. Yeah, it's gonna keep going. You've heard the story of the kid who puts a fork in the socket and gets shocked. So we've got a paperclip stuck into the neutral side and we're gonna do some tests with a fork and a couple of knives and see if we can complete that circuit using those. Right now it's not plugged in, but can a fork fit in there enough to make contact with the leads or is it too big and broad? How about the two knives we've got? We're gonna try it with all of them. Let's try butter knife first. Well, first problem immediately, I don't think there's any way to wiggle or finagle that and to actually make it. So let's try our fork next. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna go either. I don't think there's any way to touch that hot wire. Last utensil we're gonna try. I think we might have some success with this one, given the angle. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you do jump. <laughs> I told you. Look at that. So this is where the paper clip <laughs> touched our knife. Zap. So with this fork and table knife, it wouldn't fit into the outlet. It would not. So I'm thinking that this butter knife is just too rounded to actually touch the hot wire. And for this fork, those tines are just too thick. I'm sure if somebody was very determined and had a thinner fork, they could make it work. This particular fork is just very sturdy. We want to be clear that just because we weren't able to fit this fork and this knife in this outlet, does not mean it's safe. It doesn't mean you should try it. You should not try to do it. That's the whole point we're, we're not, trying to we're make. We're not putting this to the test for you to put this to the test. We're showing you why not to do this. <laughs> yeah, so what happens when you stick a paper clip in an outlet? Burns, shocks, sparks, tripping, tripping the breaker. breaker. So overall, not a good plan, but it's fun to show what happens because you always hear and now you can see why you don't want to do that. Instead, if you want to see something explode, download War Thunder using our link in the description below. Remember that you can receive a free bonus for registering a premium tanker aircraft as well as three days of premium account time. This game is free to download and is available on PC, Mac, PS4, and Xbox One. Guys, that's not all. We've always got more for you to see. That box up at the top is going to take you to our last video. You should go check that out. The other box is going to show you what YouTube thinks you should be watching next. We got this bomb here in the middle. You give that bad boy a click and you'll be subscribed to our channel. That way you never miss out on a cool video. Don't forget to ring that bell and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.